Okay, so we've now been through most of the software playing around with. Um, we've understood the peripherals and all the embedded software. Now we're going to actually have a look more at the hardware, the physical side of things. So we're saying that the hardware design, with all the bits and pieces we've got around it, we've made it easy for you. So what we're going to have a look, we're going to have a look at some of the main challenges for hardware, the different packages we've got to ease your hardware design, depending on what type of um, board you want to use. We've got our power management IC, which we mentioned earlier on, and that can be used in different modes as well. When you're doing your layout, you've got your DDR routing, and then you need all the other documents, reference boards, and extra files to help you design the rest of your hardware and test your hardware. So the main challenges that you have for hardware design. The hardware definition should be simple, so it should be easy to set your board out and get everything up and running. Your PCB routing should be low complexity. So again, with the different packages, we'll address that. Your supply definition should be as simple as possible, so external componentry around the device. So again, the PMIC will help with that. And your signal, signal integrity and testing of your signals should be made easy. So those are the four main challenges that you face as a hardware person when you're trying to generate your design. So the packages that we have. So we have four packages available for the MP1 device. So we've got varying pin counts and varying pitch sizes. Again, depending on if you need fully features, like 32-bit DDR interface, or if you need low cost, lower GPIO pins and 16-bit interfaces. So we've got all those options available to you so that you can actually um, decide which is the best fit for your particular application. So the 0.8mm pitch devices, these give you the larger physical packages and some of the periphery has been removed on the DDR so you've only got access to the 16-bit DDR interface but it means then you can use just standard um, through-hole vias to connect it and you've potentially got more GPIO pins available to you but you will need either four or six layers depending on which of the pin counts you've got inside the devices. The 12x12 package is a 0.5 millimeter pitch and again that one's got some periphery moves so it's only got the 16-bit DDR interface and on this one because of the uh, the way the pins are laid out you will need some laser vias for some of the uh, rows from the top layer down to the second layer to get some of the uh, the balls out for the um, the outer ring and the rest of them can be on plated through holes as per normal for that package and then finally the smallest uh, pin count is the 10x10 10 10 package, so the 256 pin BGA. We've only got three pins on the outer ring, so you don't need those laser vias on this one. You only need four layer board as well, and you can use standard plated through holes on this one. So again, we've got a package based on which periphery you require. Do you need the 32-bit or the 16-bit DDR interface? How many layers of boards? Do you want to have laser vias, or you want to have it all on plated through holes? So again, you've got that flexibility depending on what you're doing and how you want to design your physical board. The PMIC. So the PMIC is there to make your life easier. So as well as providing all the different power rails to the MP1 device, I'm bringing those power rails up in the correct sequence because you have the I2C control between the micro and the PMIC. It also powers all your external componentry on your board. So it will power your DDR, it will power your USB V bus. If you've got Ethernet Phi on the board, it can power that. If you've got a display on the board, it can power that. So it makes your power supply design in general for your whole board a lot simpler than using the PMIC. Again, you've got flexibility on the PMIC depending on cost, board space, additional components you can play around and pick one of the three different options there depending on how much board space you've got and it can give you up to 20 watts possible power output this PMIC. So again you can pick the best one that's suited for your um, application and it helps you simplify your uh, external component count on your bill of materials. DDR routing. 
So this is normally classified as one of the most complex parts of the layout. You've got the two different topologies. So you've got a flyby topology where you have a terminating resistor. Um, this is normally recommended for DDR3 or DDR3L where you want 32 bits using two 16-bit devices. Or you can use point-to-point. -point. This is used for normally LPDDR2 or LPDDR3. It can also be used with DDR3 or DDR3L when you just want a 16-bit single device connected. So again, depending on what you're doing, will depend on which of these two topologies you can adapt in your application. Each of our physical packages will have different routing lengths inside the chips when it comes to doing your full DDR routing. So we have this extra zip file with the guidelines and an application note to help you manipulate the layout of your DDR tracking. So this zip file and your normal software tool that's doing your layout, you can make sure your DDR lengths are plus and minus one millimeter in length and then we can potentially fine tune using our DDR tool suite. So the DDR tool suite, this helps you go through all the different tests for laying out your PCB uh, and testing your PCB. Once you've got the physical lens down to plus and minus one millimeter, this will provide the fine tuning that's needed to get it down to a lot uh, smaller difference. So I'll have a talk about the DDR tool suite in a few minutes, but it just makes life a lot easier when it comes to laying out your PCB and changing a few parameters. The documentation. So on the website now, we've got lots of application notes and it's growing day by day. Some of the key ones here are the DDR ones. So the memory routing guidelines I've just mentioned there, which is AN5122. You've got DDR configuration, AN5168. And then you've got the generic getting started guide, which tells you all reference schematics, power supplies, clocks, resets, and all that. So that's AN5031. As well as the documentation, we've got all the test-related softwares and models and things like that. So we've got the CAD symbol, so when you're doing your layouts, um, we've got our CAD symbols already available. We've got IBIS uh, simulations for board signal integrity. You've got your boundary scans, your BSDL files for doing your testing, and you've got your system view description file as well for doing the CAD. So all of those files are now on the website, so you'll be able to download them from the links that are there on the screen. Finally, we have the wiki. So the wiki is there with all the useful information. You saw the slides earlier from the wiki in the day. You can click on that, you find everything else. All the apps, notes, data sheets, reference manuals, errata sheets, board schematics, and the user manuals for each of those boards, they can be found on the wiki as well. Or you can find those on the main sd.com site uh, if you choose. And also on the wiki, you can find all the ROM code and hardware related information. So boot pins, flash connections, and things like that. So again, the wiki really is the focus point for all of your finding all the documentation on all the extra bits that you need around there. When it comes to the boards, we've got each of our boards. So this is our eval board. So sat on top of the eval board, just above the display, you can see the daughter card. That was ED1 and the main board is EV1 and we provide you with all the manufacturing files for these boards so the schematics, the bill of materials, the Gerbers and the Altium, Altium project files. All of this you can get from the website st.com so there's a dedicated link there for st.com. It's also a very good board if you just want to play with certain features if you've got um, Ethernet, some form of display uh, an SD card running things, you need a camera, um, CAN bus, USBs. That big board's got most of those peripherals bonded to connectors, so you can just quickly plug things in and have a play around with the different boards. There's two flavours of the board. There's one with security and one without security, so depending on which you uh, choose. Discovery boards are what you've got in front of you, so you've been playing with these. So it's a smaller display, not as many connectors, but again, on the website, we provide all those files. Again, bill of materials, schematics, design files. And as before, we've got two flavours. We've got with and without and security. So 
So again, depending on what you want to play around with. So based on all those features you've just seen, are those four challenges we saw right at the start seen as complex? So your hardware definition, well, you've got CubeMX, which helps you do your layouts. You've got the reference boards, you've got the application notes, and you've got the wiki. All of them can help you show you how to lay out and how simple it is to lay out your board. Your PCB routing should be low complexity. So we've got those DDR tools, you've got the reference designs, and you've got the smart package definition. So depending on which pin count layout you want will depend on how easy and how complex your PCB routing is. Your supplies definition. To cut down on external components, you can use the PMIC, reduces the number of um, external power components. You can see how we've used that PMIC in our reference designs on our application boards. And you've got that application note for getting started to see if you're doing a very minimal design, what's the minimum bits of information you need and extra components around the device. And then finally, for your signal integrity and testing, we've got all the BDSL, IBIS models, and you've got the DDR tools for fine tuning your DDR interface to make sure it's as optimized as possibly as you can possibly get to make sure that your data integrity of information transferring around the board is always valid.